All right. All right, well, I'm uh, just uh, clowning around. Building some stuff for Saga of the Goblin Horde. Uh, dropping some miniatures in-game, and there's a little something that I was doing to make your miniatures look better. If you ever cut them out of a folder or um, you know, drop them into GIMP or whatever, and you're trying to get the excess faded away and whatnot, I've got a PDF um, that I got from Richard Woolcock that has the stuff in it. So I've exported the images from the PDF into the... Um, into, into images themselves. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my Saga of the Goblin Horde campaign stuff and I'm going to choose one of these things. Go right this one here. That's not very funny. There we go. Open with. Open with. Okay, so... Now that we got this thing opened with have right one running. All right, a little gimpy action. We got a couple of guys here, some a couple of creepy looking dudesters. Do is we're gonna do this bottom one here. Uh, you're gonna want to select your fuzzy select tool. You start off by uh, creating a layer, a transparency, by going to Layer, Transparency, and Add Alpha Channel. Once that's done, choose the Fuzzy Select tool from your toolbox, and you want to grab on to, or just click on the white stuff. Click in here, I'll zoom in a little bit, but you can see the Fuzzy Select tool has kind of selected the outline of this. because of the way this image in particular is set up, there's a huge distinction between the white and the brown. So the fuzzy select tool is perfect for getting rid of all of the excess white stuff. Choose it, put on your deal, bada bing, bada boom, nice and easy. Forget about it, not really. This guy in particular is actually going to be kind of exceptionally easy to do because he already has a cool ass base and I don't need to add a base to it. But what I wanted to show you guys was, if you look in here, if I was going to import this now into Tabletop Simulator, when it shows up inside the simulator, you're going to see that, that there's this like white gray stuff that just sort of never disappears. And it kind of makes your miniatures look a little shitty. And I'm going to show you how to get rid of that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to um, select and I'm going to hit grow and I am going to change this to about three pixels and what happens is is that little uh, outline of it basically shrinks in. It, it all has to do with whether or not the um, selected item is inverted or not. That's how come, you would think that growing would make it grow and actually grow makes it shrink, but it's just because of the way that the inversion is set up. Anyways, you'll figure it out. All you got to do is just look at what happens when you hit the shrink or grow. Now that that's done, you're going to go grab your paintbrush and you're going to make a, a great big ass brush like so. Basically what I'm doing is I'm just kind of just making a, a black piece of goop pile of junk around the back of this guy. That's all there is to it. Again, back to my select, and this time I'm going to hit shrink. And I'm going to shrink it back by three, which basically pulls it back out. It grow for whatever reason. It's a little weird. And then I'm going to choose my eraser, and I'm going to get rid of all the black stuff see happens now that little gross looking kind of white fade mark is just a, a nice solid black line it gives this it gives your your critter some serious definition which i think is pretty cool another thing i'm not going to do too is uh do you have another window open let's go control c 
uh, we're, we're going to change this to say 400 pixels scale it up and then what I'll do is I'll just zoom in and show you this is the base that I usually attach to my miniatures base a name M lets you move stuff and then essentially what I would do I would place this on and around the feet go back here I'm going to select my fuzzy select tool and make sure that I'm on the layer that has this critter on it I hit that you can see that it's all selected now you want to go select and hit invert and what that's going to do is it's not selecting the stuff on the outside of the fuzzy select it's selecting the stuff on the inside of it so when I hit my shift T now to scale it you'll see that there's the the height and the width I'm gonna half that so 27 I'm gonna be like say let's go down to 1400 pixels in height scale up here and you get the gist of it right so essentially what I would do name so that the layer sticks essentially what I would do is I would put uh, let's move this over top it I would just line this up with wherever I think that he would be sitting but because this critter itself actually has a base already I, I don't even have to worry about doing it so it's just an, an added step that you can do to give your whatchamacallit your, your little base there some neat shit I'm going to delete this layer and square tool make a square bare minimum around this guy because make it gigantic and all the way around The bump will show up so by that is if you were to say select way over here when you bring this guy in t into uh, tabletop simulator you're not going to sit centered in your token and then what's going to happen is if you try and walk or stand somebody near him this this invisible part is going to be um, like an invisible wall kind of a thing there's a name for it but I ain't no graphics guy so We're going to choose about that much, and then I'm going to go to Image, Crop to Selection. I'm left with this sweet right here, and I'm pretty sure this guy's called a burrower. Now that I've got that set up, like so, we're going to go File, Export, call this guy burrower.png. PNG instead of JPEG because transparency works. It, label it or use the PNG format. Now that I've got the burrower set up, I'm going to export it. That's all there is to it. Done and done. Nice and easy. It's going to have a great, nice, sweet looking black line around it. Over to my tabletop stimulator program. And going to do is we are going to go to objects and components figurines custom figurine smashed my goblin henchman in the face ah, get out of the way there you go now if you were to do JPEG it's going to put the image in here but it's going to leave the square all the way around it which kind of sucks nobody needs to see that so we're going to go browse local files that guy was called burrower so we choose the burrower cloud him so that other people can enjoy him as well Vice, don't ask me why but I'm just going that's a front and a back image and then we're gonna hit import bada bing bada boom light is over here but you'll now notice that he has a really sweet solid black outline around him there's none of that uh, it looks like it it was cut out it actually looks like a miniature that was meant for the actual game which is pretty cool front and back little token of the burrower we're gonna click here we're gonna go down here call it burrower 
and then we're going to hit save object and save it into the root folder. One of the frustrating things that I'm finding with this is I don't know how to get the image to show up in here. It kind of drives me a touch mental. If somebody knows, that would be uh, most appreciated if you would let me know how to get them to show up. Some of the miniatures that I have, they, they, they show up for some reason and, and I don't know why. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Saga of the Goblin Horde. Big Brack shows up. Yeah, some of them do, some of them don't, and I'm not 100% sure why. I have to look into that and see if I can't figure it out. That's her. Way to get uh, a, a nice, cool looking, smooth black outline. You can see that I've done it with Brack. Um, you know what? Let me um, she squishy Mergle. Squishy Mergle is actually looking pretty good. I think I might have done squishy Mergle, but I don't. I don't think I. Could. Here's here's like kind of a prime example of of what I'm talking about. If you look at the fins on on the back of uh, scaly fin back, there there is no nice outline. Also, right up in here in his head and stuff like that, you can kind of see a bit of the gray. Uh, here's a prime example. Like down here on the token base, you're looking at the token. I mean, this is just me being finicky, but uh, you can see the little white pixels and stuff like that down on the bottom of his cape. Not so bad. Rat nose. Yeah, rat nose is another good example. You can see the top of his head all up in this area. It's all um, white. It's like got a white outline, and that's sort of what you're trying to get rid of. You want a nice, solid black outline. I, I believe I did. This guy's got it all done. So he's he's black outlined all the way around. I even it did inside the little holes and stuff like that. But anyways, yeah. Short little video on how to um, make a sweet black outline easily around your little token minis before you import them into game. Top notch. Adios, McPeoples.